Lift your hands to the Lord. Thank Him for tonight. Ask the Lord to heal you, speak to you, minister to you tonight. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your blessings tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for your blessing. Breathe on me. Breathe on me, Holy Ghost power, breathe on me, yesterday's gone, today I'll be, Holy Ghost You may be seated. All right. Today we want to start a little earlier and finish earlier. Amen. Amen. So come early. We are starting earlier than we've been starting. And uh, we are going to be blessed. Amen. Amen. How many believe you are going to be blessed at the impartation service? Amen. So at this service, we are not sharing about how to be blessed or to be rich. We are talking about the Holy Ghost. How many want the Holy Ghost? Everybody wants the Holy Ghost. It's good. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to be preaching about the Holy Spirit. All right? How many want to hear about the Holy Spirit? Hey, Sammy, when did you come? You are blessed. Hallelujah. So we are going to be hearing about the Holy Spirit. And we are going to believe God for the Holy Spirit to affect our lives. Amen. Amen. Do you want the Holy Spirit to affect your life? Do you believe the Holy Spirit can affect your life? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Do you want the Holy Spirit? What is the Holy Spirit? Where is the Holy Spirit? Is he around? Is it around? Is he around? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, turn with me to James. James, chapter three, chapter two. So my my topic is the Holy Spirit. I'm going to be sharing about the Holy Spirit for some time. Would you like to hear about the Holy Spirit? How many have the Holy Spirit? Are you sure you have the Holy Spirit? All right. James chapter 2, verse 26. 
or verse 25. Likewise, also Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way. Likewise, was also not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. Amen. Amen. As the body without the spirit is what? Is dead. So faith without works is what? Dead. Dead. Amen. Are you excited about that scripture? Everybody say it. As the body without the spirit is dead. So, hallelujah. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Are you with me? 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6. Who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. Amen. 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 The Spirit giveth what? Life is given by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Life is given by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Are you understanding the message already? The reason why you don't understand the Bible when you read it is that you read it too fast. When you read it a little slowly, you get it, you begin to get a message. The Spirit giveth life. Amen. Amen. The Spirit giveth what? Life. Life. The Holy Spirit gives life. How many want life? Alive. Come alive. Anything can come alive by the presence of the Holy Spirit. Turn to Genesis. Go all the way back to the beginning. Then we'll come back again. Now, are you in Genesis chapter 2? Genesis chapter 2 and then verse 7. Okay? And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground hmm? and breathed into his nostrils. Hmm? The breath of life. Amen. Amen. And man became a living soul. Amen. Amen. And man became what? A living soul. soul. And I'm talking, I hope you are all becoming pastors. How many are going to become pastors one day? Raise your hands. Raise your hands. Very good. So I'm, all that I'm sharing with you is good for pastors. Amen. Amen. I find it more easy, to, more easy to talk to pastors or people who are going to become pastors one day. What do you think? Yes. Huh? Yes. So I'm, 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 I'm not trying to make you rich. I'm trying to make you spiritual. Yes. And I'm not trying to make you successful. I'm trying to make you please God. Yes. 
Hallelujah. Amen. So, all that I'm saying is in that direction. What do you think? Is it a good idea? Yes. Yeah. Do you want that? Yes. Say, I like it. I, like it. I, want, it. I want it. I have it. I, have it. I, take, it. I take it. I receive it. I, I am receiving it. Amen. Amen. How many have played with clay before? How many have played with um, plasticine before? You know plasticine? Okay, but you know clay. You know mud. God played with mud. And he formed something. Then he blew on it. His spirit. And the parts, some of the parts that he blew on turned into kidneys. Some turned into eyes. And some turned into a heart. Some turned into stomachs. Some turned into blood. The, the dust. The clay. Have you heard that dust thou art? And unto dust thou shalt return. That is why recently when they went to open the graves of some people at is it Osu Cemetery or they were trying to clear the place, they opened, there was nothing there. Do you see? Because the, pe- the people have returned. Return. Everybody say return. return. You've come back to what you were before the breath of life was breathed into you. And man became a living soul. The Holy Spirit can be said to be the life giver of anything. A dead preacher or a dead sermon will come alive not by techniques of preaching. Say a few words, three examples, two stories, this and that, illustrations, gestures, and so on. It's not what gives life. You understand? It happens that life fails messengers use those techniques. For instance, one day, a young man was asked, well, uh, he's, or he, he was asked or he said he wanted to become a Christian. And so they asked him, what, so what do you want to do? What, what do you want to do to become a Christian? He said, well, I want to wear a white shirt with a black tie. And he said, why? He said, oh, that is what the Christ, that is what all the Christians wear. So I know that to become a Christian is to have the white shirt and the black tie. Do you understand? It happened that all the Christians or many of the Christians who were working were putting on the white shirts with the, with the black ties. So he felt that to become a Christian means to get a white shirt and get a black tie. And then you are a Christian. But ladies and gentlemen, this is the mistake we are making. When we see somebody who has the Holy Spirit or somebody who has the gift, then we look at the things the person does. And then instead of going for the Holy Spirit, we try to copy a few things. And then when we've copied them, we say we also have what that person has. Do you understand? But that is not the case. Catherine Kuman, for instance, if you read her biography, at the very end, they say after she died, several people tried to copy her way of speaking and her movements and her singing. She, a song that she, she loved to sing was, um, then sings, my soul, my savior God. I think that, that's one of the comments of she how great thou art, how great thou art. So a lot of people tried to sing that, how great thou art, but still, you get what I'm saying? You couldn't walk into the gift, you couldn't walk into the anointing. 
And people try to talk the way she talked. Instead of saying, hello, they say, hello. She had a way of, you know, saying that. But still, <laughs> you, you can try and copy, but you don't have the spirit. May you have the spirit in the name of Jesus. How many believe that by the time we are closing, the spirit will be upon you? I believe it. Hallelujah. You will never be the same in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So man, God went to the dust and the sand to play. One time I went to the beach and I played and I made a castle. Do you see? And I was breathing on it, but it never came alive. So I thank God for the Holy Spirit. Because the Bible says the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. Life. Life to your church. Amen. 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 Now, how many know that when you are a shepherd or a pastor and you are breathing death, people will go away. What do you think? And people will not come. Even the smell of the mortuary is so terrible. Turn back to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Are you there? I feel the Holy Spirit is coming on you. Amen. Amen. Now, Verse 7, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 7. It says, if the ministration of death, written and engraven in stones, was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away, how shall not the ministration of the Spirit be glorious? Ministration of the Spirit is a glorious thing. Amen. How many are ready to receive a ministration of the Spirit? I want to receive a ministration of the Spirit. For the Spirit to overflow into your life and into your very being. Can I have an amen? Amen. And I know that you are going to receive a ministration of the Spirit into your life in the name of Jesus. That is what makes the difference. It's not even what you are saying, but the fact that there is life given by the Holy Spirit. And I want to say to many of us, if you start to preach now, people will sleep. People will yawn. People will not come again. Because anything that smells of the mortuary or cemetery, is repelling in its very nature. And many of us have that ministration of death, anointing free ministrations. And I'm training you, amen, amen. to have the Holy Spirit. Eric, do you want the Holy Spirit? Huh? You want the Holy Spirit? Yes. Receive it. So that the words that come from your mouth will be full of life. Look, every preacher, whether he is preaching this way or this way, if the Holy Spirit is in him, people understand it and are blessed. Hallelujah. Even the ones you don't understand, people understand it. <laughs> one day I was looking at somebody. I thought I was the only one who didn't understand his preaching. And I mentioned it to somebody. I, you know, I was in America. I said, oh, I was just saying that, oh, it's not everybody I understand. I said, then I mentioned this pastor. And I said, for instance, this pastor on television, very famous pastor, I don't understand. He said, oh, I mean, he, he said, oh, you are a far better preacher than him. I was surprised. Oh, what does he say? He said, oh, I don't understand you also when he, when he preaches. So I realized that there were many people who don't understand. But when you see the guy's church, it's like a sea, a sea. You see the people going far. You don't understand, but somebody understands. And the Holy Spirit is on the person, I'm telling you. 
somehow in the midst of the gibberish that they are saying, somebody has received the wow blessing. And your clear sermon with three points, uh, uh, what you recapitulation and then conclusion and others, people are windows and other things. People are not going far with it. Is it not amazing? The main thing we are looking for is the Holy Spirit to give new life. May you be filled with life. As for Holy Spirit, you can even almost change the name to word life. Coming alive. Coming alive. May your ministry come alive. May your church come alive. May your fellowship come alive. When the Holy Spirit is in you, you can be in a corner. And people will come to the corner. Look at this church. We are in one of the corners of Accra. From here, about 400 meters this way is the end of Accra. In fact, it's the end of Ghana. Ghana ends just here. We are in a corner of Ghana. When you go this way, you are out of Ghana. You go straight or you are in the sea. Or you didn't know. From here to here is the end of Ghana. So we are at one corner of Ghana. We have been squeezed into a corner. And people come from everywhere to the corner. To receive life. May you be filled with the Spirit. And be filled with life. The day your spirit goes out of your body, your body will stop working immediately. At different stages of the development of science, they always used to define death differently, depending on what they know. And whenever they get to the frontier of their knowledge, then they make a definition there. For instance, there was a time when somebody dies, they just look at him, if he's very still, like Pharaoh those days, they'll close their eyes, go out, come in the evening, come in the morning, go and then they'll come and say, the great king is dead. Because you have to look at him like he's not moved at all. And they look. Then at the time came, they put their ear on to see, is there any movement, is there any life? Or then they, they touch the person, it becomes cold. I remember one time I went to raise the dead somewhere. And that, that dead person had been dead for some time. So when I held the person, the person was cold. So that's how I even knew the person had been dead for some time. So they, they would do that. Later on, they discovered a stethoscope, how to listen to the heart. So they listened to the heart and then the, the lungs. But after a while, they realized that even listening to the heart and the lungs, when the heart is not beating and they are not hearing any sounds, they realize that maybe there's some activity still in the brain. So they look at the pupils or the eyes to see if it responds to light. And when they put the light and it starts to close, that is not the, not the eyelids or eyelashes, the pupils inside the blood, there's something there the pupil, when they put a light there, like it moves. The person is still alive, even though you can't hear. Yeah. yeah, you can't hear this, you can't hear this, but it's alive. After the eye one, two has gone, they found out that there's still something there. That is, the person is still alive. So they, they'll keep you even on a machine. That's later on they discovered. So maybe a lot of people who are not dead have been buried. And they died in the coffins. And they died underground. Based on their knowledge. So, so far, the furthest human beings have gone now is to diagnose up to the brain. But there's the real death. The real death, which people don't know, is in the Bible. That it is the body without the spirit. That is where the person is dead. It's not whether the person is breathing or heart beating, but when the spirit has gone out of the person, that is when the person is dead. And I can't blame the scientists because there is no machine that can look at the spirit. You blame them for, I mean, they've gone, they need a spiritometer. They've gone so far, but they can't use a spiritometer or holy ghostico meter 
to detect the presence of the spirit of the person. That is really when he is dead. So keep on discovering, but you get to a point you cannot discover the spiritual or the spirit side of it. So really, death is caused by the going away of the Holy Spirit. That's right. Amen. Amen. And the secret behind every anointed person and the secret behind every blessed ministry, living church, living minister, anything that is alive, even your body that is alive, is the Spirit. The Holy Spirit. That's the secret. There was a time when people thought that if you were a teacher of the Word, your church cannot grow. You need to be like a preaching person. And they say, I have to believe you, God bless you. God is blessing you now. And then people will be playing the organ. Where is he? That's how the black Americans used to preach. You know, and then it's like, uh, I, I'm dead, but I'm alive. I'm, I'm, I'm coming out. I'm coming out. You know, those type of uh, preaching. You get it? Then it's like, the church is alive. So when Kenneth Hagin came on the scene, because he was a cool teacher, of the word, and he was not a powerful preacher like A. A. Allen and Ora Roberts and some of these other more dramatic and spectacular preachers. He was just this verse, this verse, he was explaining. People didn't give him much chance. You understand? Because outwardly looked that he wasn't, you know, coming to say much. He was just teaching certain things. But there was powerful anointing. He continued to teach until he dominated the whole church. He dominated the worldwide church with his teachings. Yeah. And then everybody now wanted to be a teacher. From then on, everybody was called to be a teacher. Yeah. After Papa Hagen, everybody said he was a teacher, even in Ghana, including myself. I said, I'm also a teacher. <laughs> but there was a time nobody will accept such a calling. Teacher? What is teacher? <laughs> but because somebody who has injected life into yeah. that office, you understand? Yeah. Has come, then you begin to see what it is like when that thing comes alive. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. When you see a mummy or a dead body, you never know how jovial. You people, you don't know somebody close who has died before. One of the things you look at, at the person and say, he's still talking. How he could talk, how he was full of life. That's what we say. And he chats and he laughs and he does this and he does that. And he's quiet. When my father died, I look, I said, this man is quiet. He's not saying anything. They are carrying him. They brought him from Kolebu Motri in the middle of the night, 1 a.m., 2 a.m. They are carrying him from there. They said, he's a chief, and a chief must not see the sunshine. So he must move in the night. Huh? All kind of weird things. But he was not, a, I mean, he was, the life was gone. But normally if he was there, come on, tell me from what is this nonsense you are doing? <laughs> if I'm dead and you are coming to carry me in the night, I will kick your head and say, what is wrong with you? <laughs> but you see, when the life has gone out, you see, the person is quiet. He's not talking. He's not alive. Because the Holy Spirit is gone. Or the Spirit is gone. When the Spirit comes into you, there's life. Your things are alive. No matter what it is, if it's teaching or if it's prophetic, it is whatever. There is life now. There's now something living. That's right. And everybody wants a living thing. You, you understand what I'm saying? Everybody wants to relate with something that is alive. Hallelujah. Amen. A living tortoise is better than a dead elephant. Amen. Amen. A living dog is better than a dead elephant. How many would prefer a dead elephant to a living dog? So God gives life. As soon as the Holy Spirit is there, life. So if the Holy Spirit is going to be in your life, different forms of life are coming into your life. Your Bible reading will come alive. You see, the reason why you don't understand the Bible and it puts you to sleep. It's, sleep is almost death. You see? Death. You are, you are dying, but you don't fully go. How many have realized that when you read the Bible, you sleep? 
Raise your hand if you have realized that when you read the Bible, you sleep. But when the Holy Spirit is there and is ministering to you, you will be paralyzed in your room. You can't do anything. It's true. The reason why we are not enjoying the Bible is because the Holy Spirit is not around and he's not with us. Sometimes when I'm reading my Bible and the Holy Spirit is present, I know that it's like he's present there teaching me right there and then. I can feel it and I cannot sleep. But when the Holy Spirit is not there to teach me, in fact, one of my best sleeping tablets, if I want to sleep now, I can tell you if I take my Bible, especially if you go to certain Leviticus center, those type of places, oh, you sleep right now. <laughs> it's the most powerful sleeping tablet. Come alive. Come alive. Come alive. God wants you to come alive. God wants your preaching to come alive. Don't, don't say, oh, I am a woman, so I don't have life. Don't say, oh, I am not like this person, so I don't have life. Don't say, I'm not like this. Don't just learn to shout or do whatever. But there is something that gives life. You see, and most of us, we don't pray. Do you understand? We don't pray. Ain't it now? When you witness to somebody, he will not mind you. He will say, I see your point, but I don't agree with you. And then he's on his way. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? Amen. I want you to come alive. Everything comes alive when the Holy Spirit comes. Everything comes alive. Amen. Now, turn with me to John chapter 6. And we're going to look at verse 63. Most of us know this verse, especially for exams. Is that not so? (laughs) It says, it is the spirit that quickeneth. Amen. Amen. Quicken is an old word for making something come alive. Amen. Amen. It is the spirit that makes you come alive. Amen. Amen. The flesh profiteth nothing. Amen. Amen. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Hallelujah. So I believe that many of us lack the Holy Spirit. And we lack the Holy Spirit because we don't spend enough time praying and asking God for the Holy Spirit. Because the Bible says that if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more would your Heavenly Father give you the Holy Spirit if you ask Him for it? He's not going to give you a snake or some other evil thing. Amen. Amen. And so we, we do not pray. Do you understand? We, we do not have prayer that makes contact with God. It is easy to say, I have prayed. Ten minutes have gone by. But you could have prayed for one minute and you would have made contact with God. But most of us do not have time, do you understand, to make contact with God. God through prayer because once you have made contact with God through prayer you become filled with the Holy Spirit I tell you you are filled with the even if it is two seconds when you kneel down in his presence and he is there with you you understand and he comes to you you are filled with the Spirit then you are different from somebody who maybe has prayed for 45 minutes but has not made any contact with God. And sometimes it takes three hours. Sometimes it takes two hours. You see, and I'm talking to you as shepherds and as pastors and as people who want to work for God, that if you don't have time for God, God will not have time for you. There are some people who say, why are you close to this person and not close to this person? Many times there are people who are, I mean, they, they don't have time to see me. Do you understand what I'm saying? They don't have, look, 
when I finished preaching here, I've been doing something. I've been busy the whole day. Now, when I finish preaching, right, the meetings that I have can take me to 5 a.m. Very easily. This after this, I will invite you if you like and come and sit down with me. And if you can make it go faster, I'll give you thousand dollars. <laughs> Do you understand? I'll give you money to finish it quickly. Now, if you can wait to 5 a.m., then I'll see you. But most of you cannot wait to 5 a.m. Do you understand? Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's not that I want to befriend somebody, but somebody has the time to hang around. Somebody has no time. Do you understand? And so in the end, you find out that when you are an important person, you end up becoming friendly or closer to those who want to be close and are prepared to pay the sacrifice. No, you, you can't even control it. I mean, you can control it to a point, but it, doesn't, it, it does not even depend on you. Because I cannot, as a Christian, ask somebody to wait till tomorrow morning every day. I mean, how? As a born-again Christian, I cannot do something like that. I'm, I'm a born-again Christian. Yes, I'm born again, and I have to do good things. So in the end, you have people who are prepared to pay the price, people who are humble, people who are nobodies, people who are whatever, who, be, who come close, and that's how it is with God. Most of us are not prepared to pay the price to stay certain time or certain length of time with God. No. We have to go here. We have to do this. We have to see here. We have to move here. We have to do this. I mean, God must organize himself to see me. I am speaking to him. It's now 6.30 in the morning. By 10 to 7, I'm going somewhere because there's traffic. I have to be here. I have to be here. So it's up to him to arrange himself. God, oh, almighty God. It's up to him to organize himself within these 20 minutes and be available for discussion now. G- give me a microphone. I need a mic. I need a mic. Yeah, you go there. Go to this corner. And then pick them one by one. The, every, all of you take a microphone and give me an ultimatum. Stand here. Stand behind where Ebo is standing. Uh-huh. Any of you take the mic. Yeah. And give me an ultimatum that I must see you. Otherwise, I've lost my chance. You are giving me 10 minutes to see you, and you don't have time. Who is the first person? Get cost. Randy, call anybody you want to call. <laughs> okay, Randy, start yourself. You start yourself. Bishop, you know, because of certain things, I have to go ahead, so if you can close the service now. Huh? I should close the service now and see now. you. And see you now. Because I have to go and see you. Your mouth, I will have time to see you. <laughs> Who is the next person? Who is the next person? Uh, there are some ladies at the back that give to them. Those ladies at the back, yes? No, everybody is afraid. <laughs> okay, give this guy. This guy is over here. Bishop, please, when the service ends today, I'd like to see you. So I know there are so many people who try to see you. So can I come first? And then after that, we we'll let it's, it's, it's even very nice. nice. I mean, can you come first? I mean, uh-huh, you see, that one cries like, that's, that's not what I'm talking about. S- somebody else. Bishop, I have certain things to do, and you know the traffic on the road, so if you can please carry me up in that. That one is even polite. You see, the point, that is not what we say. Yeah. That's not what we say to God. Yeah. Huh? Who, who is that? Yes, George. So it's been 15 minutes now. I've been waiting for the past 30 minutes. If you can hurry up, I want to see you between for just five minutes. So if you can please hurry up with your meeting and let's meet and discuss this thing. Five minutes. 
Eight thirty to eight thirty-five. <laughs> okay, I've heard. Your head like coconut. Give it to somebody. Preaching after preaching. What do you see me after preaching? After preaching. When, when you are going out there, I'd like to call you so that we talk about what I came for. Really? Immediately? Yeah. You don't have time to wait. Yeah. Not at all. Yeah. We'll see to you immediately. Yeah. It is even polite. Yeah. What we are telling God is that by 720, you've lost the chance. You will never get me. I'm finished. You can't have time. Yeah? Is that not how we pray? Is that not a time allotted for the prayer? And you think about it, even with a human being, he will not mind you. How much more God? That is why we are so empty. And that's why when we preach, our fellowships get smaller and smaller and smaller. Because we are having a ministration of death. Yes, ministration of death. Have you seen these new churches, prophets, uneducated, and their churches are full? Because they have life. That's the reason why their churches are full. We have education and so on, but there's no life. Life comes from the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, the thing that makes alive the scripture is the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The flesh profited nothing, but the Spirit quickened it. Amen. Amen. Why did the disciples, turn with me to Acts chapter 1. Why did the disciples not have, not go out? Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. Verse 5. And, or verse 4. Being assembled, then he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father. Which saith he, you have heard of me. Amen. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Not many days hence. Amen. Amen. All right. And then when they were come together, Lord, will thou restore the kingdom? And he said, no, it's not for you to know, but you shall receive power or life after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And then you shall be my witnesses. Amen. Amen. You shall receive what? Power. Power. Power or strength will come into a dead thing that is lying there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit brings alive even the most simple words in broken English. And in bad English, and in tea, and in ga, and whatever language, the Holy Spirit, you have power. Your, you, know, you see, you can just interchange it, and your words shall receive power. Wow. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Your words shall receive power. Your words shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And that is what we must look for the Holy Spirit. And that's why we are having these impartation services. How many have not yet been baptized with the Holy Ghost? How many don't speak in tongues? Give me a wave of friend, please. You don't yet speak in tongues. Give me a wave. Right hand. Okay. Any more hands? Let me see your hands. Okay, very good. How many of us speak in tongues? How many of us would, I would say that we don't have time, much time, to speak in tongues? Raise your hand. Oh, you all have a lot of time to speak in tongues. Amen. Oh, then I believe that we are filled with the Spirit. And we are going higher and higher. And we are going deeper and deeper. Is that not so? Or it's not so? Why is it that when somebody reads the Bible to you, it's as though you are not reading the same Bible? It's as though you've not read it before. Because this letter killeth. Even the book of Acts killeth. Genesis killeth. Ephesians killeth. But when the Holy Spirit comes, there is life. Life. Receive 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 life. Life. You shall receive power. 
You shall receive power. When a man is lying on his bed and he's dead, and he said, You shall receive power, and, then, and he, the power comes fully. Then he begins to say, He's back on his feet, he's alive again. Amen. That's what we say. He's back on his feet, he's alive. There's power. We have grade one, grade two, grade three, grade four, grade five power in the arms, in the legs, in medicine, grades of power. And then when you have maximum power, said, and you see the person walking around, he's alive. 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 No matter the English you speak. No matter the bullets you are pronouncing, there is no chat that had more bullets than action. When I first started going to action, bullets of with AK-47s and other kind of ammunition and other things. I'm telling you, if I one day I took my little sisters to church, and they laughed from the beginning to the, I was so embarrassed that I will never bring you people to this church again. Because every word I tell you, bullets of English language. Huh. Open your eyes. They say, open your eyes. And everybody, open your eyes. I mean, I'm telling you, very basic things. That was how the church was when it began. But there was life there. Amen. And people were getting saved there. Where I, where I came from, there were no bullets. Where I was going to before, there were no bullets. The people were organized. They had this, they had that. But there was no life. So we all started to drift towards where life was. Yeah. And even if the life has the bullets, we will like the bullets with the life. Yeah. Amen. 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 But when you love to listen to unbeliever music, or half cast music, music that is neither here nor there, we have two types of music, unbeliever music and half caste music. It's neither Christian nor unbeliever. You are always attracting. Attracting what spirit? Elijah said, let the guy play the harp so that the spirit will fall on me. And you are playing demonic music and other worldly music. Even the news brings evil spirits. Bad news, tension. It brings, I mean, even certain films, people who are possessed with devils, things you would never do. You are watching them and people who are filled with evil spirits are acting and performing for you for three hours. And you are being trained by them and taught by them. Hey! I want you to be anointed. When you go to work, you must be anointed. When you, when you step on a plane, you must be anointed. When you are moving around, you must be anointed. The anointing must be with you and around you everywhere. The Holy Ghost is the anointing. You must be filled with the Spirit before you stand to preach. You must be filled with the Spirit. Everything you are doing. I tell you, it, it is what makes things grow. Life. When a baby is dead, it's dead. It never grows. Mm. It decays. But when it's alive, it grows bigger. Mm. So when the spirit is in something, it grows bigger. That's it. Because of the presence of the spirit in the thing. I've seen babies in the fridge, babies in the mortuary, little children. They were dead. That's why they were there. But I've seen little children with life and they get bigger. And they grow bigger and bigger and bigger. Receive the life from the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Tell me, be the John chapter 5. John chapter 5. Are you there? Now, for as the Father raiseth up the dead, and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. Amen. Amen. The Son of God and the Father are in the quickening business Amen. or in the making alive of dead things. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 One day I was somewhere and then the Lord told me that I was a certain ministry that was there a couple of hundred years ago 
that is dead, that I was that ministry which has been brought alive. Yeah, I will not tell you which ministry it was. Yeah, he told me. He said to me, you are that, it was not even a church, but you are that ministry that is being brought back to life. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. The same, God, you see, God is doing the same thing, but he's just putting life, Amen. you understand, into yeah. some things that are dead. And yeah. even things that are dead, he sometimes wants to revive it and bring it back to life. Now, there is also a certain aspect of the Holy Spirit, which I know is not so easy to understand, but it has to do with the Holy Spirit and your body. Turn to Romans chapter 8. And we are going to be ending. I am laying a good foundation for the Holy Spirit. I am preaching so that you will be interested in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. How many are interested in the Holy Spirit? Very good. Amen. Amen. Are you there? Okay. Romans chapter 8, and we are reading. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, by, by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. Amen. Amen. Are you there? Yes. Are you there? Yes. All right. Now verse 21. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Amen. Amen. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Are you there? The first fruits of the Spirit. We, even we ourselves, grow within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wait, the redemption of our body. Amen. Amen. Are you there? Yeah. Um, for we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? For we hope for that which we see not. Amen. Amen. Let's read on. 26. Um, sorry. Let's read from verse, let's read verse 26 first. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Amen. Amen. For we know not what to pray for as we ought to, but the Spirit itself maketh intercessions for us with groanings which cannot be heard. Amen. Amen. This is more on the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Now, let me just make a comment here about the infirmities. All of us have infirmities. But have you noticed that when somebody with infirmities has the Holy Spirit, it's as though he doesn't have infirmities. All of you who are preachers, you will never be preachers without infirmities. You will always have an infirmity. Infirmities upon infirmities. These days as I'm growing, I'm beginning to see that ministry is a ministry in the midst of human weaknesses. Men and women who are weakened by the realities and the frailties of their real lives. Whom God has anointed and put his spirit upon. And the spirit helps. It's the spirit who makes somebody who is a divorcee able to preach to millions of people and everybody is receiving. Yeah. It's the spirit that is helping the weakness. Somebody like Kenneth Copeland, he's a divorced man who is remarried. Someone like Bishop, um, that big Eddie. bishop, Eddie Long, divorced and he's preaching thousands of people. It's the spirit who helps the weakness. It's the spirit who helps people with challenges. You understand? Challenges. Look at Billy Graham, this last crusade. He was brought there in a wheelchair. And as he was being brought there in a wheelchair, I mean, he needs even, he does not sleep in the same room with his wife because he needs a nurse to look after him, to put him in bed. The wife also needs a nurse. 
So they are in different rooms. A man full of weakness. And yet in this weakness, he is brought to the pulpit in a wheelchair and made to stand for a few minutes. And the Holy Spirit is there to help the infirmities. I tell you, maybe somebody has not opened his life to share the infirmities. That's why you don't know that every life, how many realize that your life, okay, let's not talk about somebody, but you, your life. How many have realized that it's there? Is there infirmities? More, if you like, start writing difficulties, challenges, problems, prayer topics, issues, difficulties. But the Holy Spirit helpeth those infirmities. Amen. And I tell you, that is why I want the Holy Spirit more of the Holy Spirit. And that's why we are having the impartation service so that you can receive more of the Holy Spirit. Now, as we go deeper into the impartations of the Spirit, something is going to begin to happen. This is what I'm coming to, and I'm going to close with that, because I'm just laying the foundation so that we can continue. Look at verse 10. Or let's read from verse 6. To be carnally minded is death. (laughs) Huh? But to be spiritually minded. In other words, your mind is affected by the Holy Spirit. It's life and peace. Hallelujah. Receive life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity with God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. If Christ be in you, verse 10, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. It's a complex letter that they are writing here. Verse 11. But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead huh? shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Amen. 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 Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh Hallelujah. to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if ye through the spirit do modify the deeds of your body, you shall live. For as many as are led led by the Spirit of God. They are the sons of God. If the Holy Spirit want to preach about the Holy Spirit, we can be here for years. But I just want you to notice something. The Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by His Spirit that dwelleth in you. Now, the Holy Spirit gives life, quickens. If my arm is dead and moves, it's been quickened. A quick movement is like life. The older a person is, he cannot do certain dances. The nearer he is dead, he is to death. His movements slow down. The nearer he is to, like young children, running, they are getting to run here, run here, run here, run here. Is it not so? More life. The nearer you are to your death, you are coolly moving around. And then the children will be running around. Is it not so? Is it not so? Yeah. When the Holy Spirit is upon us, listen carefully. This is just one thing I want you to take home with you. It affects your physical body as well. Amen. I hear you. He says he shall quicken the mortality of your bodies. Wow. 
the mortal body wow. is affected. Wow. The presence of your spirit or the spirit in you affects, are you listening to me? Yes. Affects even your body. That is why when there is a strong ministration of the spirit, you see physical reactions. In fact, the absence of the spirit leads to complete death. When the spirit is taken out of the body, the body totally goes dead. When the person's spirit comes, the person comes alive. When the Holy Spirit comes, it can bring somebody from the dead. And the Bible is saying that that spirit will now come and give life to your mortal body. And it, it seems to affect you. Not that it seems. He's saying that it will actually affect your physical mortal body. But you need... You see, this is where we start to go into gray areas. One day I saw somebody shaking. I said, why are you shaking? He said, I don't know. I mean, it was in a service. And we're ministering the spirit. I said, why are you shaking? He said, I don't know. I said, have you shaken like this? Before? No. And he was shaking. The spirit has quickened the body. Wow. And that's why you have different kinds of reactions. Some shake. Some tremble. When you read through the Bible, shakings, tremblings, quaking. There was a group called the Quakers. Trembling, shaking, falling, screaming. It's, they are all signs of, compare it with a church service where they are just playing. The, everybody is sitting there quiet. Quiet. Sleeping. And the preacher is reading out his sermon. I don't know if it's the former president who was saying that he, as a president, he does not come to read speeches. And you, a priest, you are supposed to preach living things. You are reading. <laughs> what do you think? You think if I was reading the sermon, it would be the same as what I'm doing now? I would have finished the sermon by now. And you'll all be asleep. Hallelujah. But a new life is coming. Oh, I said a new life is coming. Amen. That's the basis of our, this verse is the basis of our miracle services. That the Holy Spirit can do something physically. That's the basis of a miracle. Yeah. It's the basis of miracles. That the presence of the Holy Spirit can make something physically change. Yeah. That's the basis of our miracle services. Is this verse. But people don't know it. He can quicken, make alive a mortal body. He can do something. That's why Jesus felt in himself that power had gone out. And the woman who was with the issue of blood felt that she was healed. So what I'm trying to say is that the Holy Spirit's presence can cause you to actually, you see, if he is in with you, and, um, in fact, you cannot even say what particular thing can happen. Almost anything can happen. I mean, anything physical. Anything. That is why in all the revival, there's always been something. Somebody's la- there was laughing revival. They will laugh and laugh. I've seen one before. Where a person laughs and laughs and laughs, he cannot control himself. Maybe that's what happened to me the first time I went to the Holy Spirit. I started laughing. I thought I was laughing at the people. Maybe I was filled with the Spirit. <laughs> Maybe I was actually filled with the Spirit because I couldn't control myself. I laughed and I laughed and I laughed and I laughed. <laughs> Are you listening to me? Yeah. The Holy Spirit is real. Do you believe the Holy Spirit is real? Do you believe that he comes and he goes? Do you believe that he comes and he goes? Do you believe that he's real? Do you believe we can be in a room and then he comes? These days, sometimes when I'm preaching, I, I feel the Holy Spirit just comes at a particular point. And he's there 
but there is another way in which he comes I cannot also explain sometimes I sense that he's coming onto the stage amen it's true it's true I don't know if you were here was it in here I was somewhere and I said I can feel rain was it here it was a camp meeting that's all okay yeah last week I was preaching a prophet walked into the service when I saw I saw you were you were standing rain was raining on you fully and it was raining only around you just last week raining I was in the middle of the rain only as I was standing in front of it. but see I could feel something but you see when you come it's like is he now becoming abnormal are we now moving into something we are not sure about he watched Benny, he would say, sometimes when, he's, when himself comes fully, he said that he can feel something on his thumb, this thumb. And he said, when he feels that thing, God does great things, that he will start doing great things. <laughs> yeah. But you see, all those things have their basis in this verse, that the spirit can do something to the mortal body. Including raising it up from the dead completely. Everything that happens physically is, 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 is allowed. And John Wesley, he didn't understand what was happening. Whenever he preached, he had all these things happen so that he would go up to the people and just observe them. <laughs> then he would write it in his journal, what he saw. But he had no explanation. People who wrote about him said that when he was a child, there was a ghost in his house called Old Jeffrey. And so because of the ghost, he believed in ghosts. Do you understand? So all these spiritual activities, they were because of his former belief as a child in ghosts. People have a way of explaining everything for this ministry. Uh, what do you think? Uh, my prayer for you is that you are going to experience the Holy Spirit to the point that you feel him in the room. Do you want to feel him in the room? Yes, sir. Do you want to believe in him in the room? Yes. One time I was in the, in the office with Pastor Eddie, and I think it was Bidia, three of us, we were there. It, uh, look, somebody came to sit with us. I'm telling you, immediately I looked at Pastor Eddie, I looked at Bidia, the three of us were there, I said, he's just walked in, and every three of us knew at the same time that somebody had upstairs here. I'll never forget. You can ask them. Where, where is Pastor Eddie? Go and call him. Miss Travel. Travel. Okay. <laughs> it's real. It's real. It's real. How many want to feel him real? <laughs> Catherine Coleman said something. What the secret is, make the Holy Spirit real to the people. And then miracles will happen. Jesus didn't do any. His calling was there, but it came alive. When the Holy Spirit came upon me, then it's, let's go. I'm here to do miracles. Make the Holy Ghost real. I want the Holy Ghost now to be real in your life. And I want you to cast out that spirit of 20 minutes for God, five minutes for him to appear. He has five more minutes. If he doesn't appear, he has lost his chance to manifest. Stand to your feet. Amen. Hallelujah. Let your hands to the Lord. Every minister must ask the Lord, Lord, I want to be a minister that feels your spirit. Every member here must ask God, I want to feel the Holy Spirit. I want to feel the Holy Spirit. 
I need to feel the Holy Spirit. I need to have the Holy Spirit in my life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Everyone here must desire the Holy Spirit. Everyone here must desire the Holy Spirit. Everyone here must desire the Holy Spirit. Everyone here must seek the Holy Spirit to bring life where there is no life. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you. Bring alive your choir. Bring alive your music. Bring alive your ministry. Bring alive your church. Bring alive your calling. Bring alive. 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 All that is dead to come alive. Malone What makes you a boring person is not your family background. What makes you a boring person is not your educational background. It's the, the deadening effect that you have around you is from a lack of the Holy Spirit. Oh, Holy Spirit. Yes. 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 Breathe on me, Holy Spirit. Breathe on me, Lord. Breathe on me, Lord. Let me know when you are here. Let me feel you when you are with me. Let me experience you. Shendelise. Farindele mele simbolo la cabreleste. Thank you, Lord, for your blessing. Thank you. Oh, breathe on us, Lord. Ask Him to feel you now. Ask Him to feel you now. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Thank you, Lord. Ministries come alive. Ministries come alive. Let your fingers and your hands and your palms come alive. When you lay hands on somebody, when you shake hands with somebody, may there be power and life in your hands and your palms. Oh God. When you look at somebody, may there be power. Holy Spirit. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Fail. 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 Just one person. Only one person. Fail. 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 Thank you, Lord. Receive the Holy Ghost. Lift your hands to the Lord. Lift your hands to Him. Fill me, Lord. Fill me, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Bring it to me. Breathe on me, Lord. Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your blessing. Thank you for your blessing. Jesus. Father, thank you for your blessing. Lift your hands to the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your blessing. Thank you, Lord, for 
touch you. Never the same again. 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 Oh yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Say, Lord, fill me. Lift your hands. Say, fill me. Fill me, Lord. Receive the filling right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your blessing, your filling. Oh, yes. Be filled. 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 Receive it. Take it. It's flowing like a river. Rivers of oil. Rivers of oil. Bring to me. If you sense the Holy Ghost in a special way on your life, come to the front. I just want to pray with you briefly. If you sense God is touching, if you don't sense God is touching, do not come, please. Come and let me pray with you. Bring her to me. <laughs> Lift your hands to the Lord. <laughs> Father, thank you. Change. Never the same again. Never the same again. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, 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 yes. Phil, receive it. I want to pray for me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Be blessed of the Lord. Be blessed of the Lord. Be blessed of the Lord. I sense the Holy Ghost filling, filling. He's, he's touching you. He's touching you. He's filling you. He's filling you. He's filling you. Receive it. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody in the congregation, lift your hands to the Lord. Fail. Fail. New anointings, new grace. Everybody is receiving a higher, I sense a higher level. A higher level is coming into your life and ministry. Receive it. One. Take it. One, two, three. A new level is coming to your life, to your ministry. A new level. of the gift of God new levels new levels new levels thank you thank you thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus it's happening it's happening lift your hands to the Lord right now everybody taking a deep breath one I'm going to count up to three I want you to take in a deep breath Jesus breathe on the disciple one 
Everybody, whoever you are, no matter how clever you are, two, three, receive it now. Thank you, thank you. Take it, it's flowing. It's flowing. All over this place, all over, receive the Holy Ghost. Be careful. Receive the Holy Ghost. Ladies, be healed. Be healed. You will not go to the mental hospital because of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. You will not go to the Holy Ghost. To the, to the mental hospital. Leave them down. Leave them down. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. You will not be admitted in Jesus' name. Oh. I sense people who have to be sick. But because the Holy Ghost is touching you tonight. Yes, 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 yes. Jesus. It's flowing like a river, I tell you. It's flowing. Take it. Take it. One. Two. Receive it. Be filled. Yes. I see people being lifted into the ministry. Into the cause of God. Into the call of God. Flowing. Flowing. It's flowing. Yes, Lord. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody in the congregation, lift your hands, close your eyes. Take you to a new level. Excuse me. Oh yes, a new level. A new level. Yes. Yes. Jesus, thank you for a new level. New level. New level. New level. I sense a new level. New level. New level. New level. Sembele. 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 Shibe. Oh yes. Spirit of God, tell Libra, Samale, Debele, Kebele. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Be Jesus. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, come to me. Come to me. Come to me. Kabalalama. Sabalalama. Sabalalama. Sabalalama.
begin to thank the Lord right now. Lay hands on your head right now, wherever you are. The Holy Ghost is touching you in the congregation. Receive it now. Every person here, every minister, every pastor, every shepherd, every person, God is filling you. Come back to me. Come back. Let there be life where there was no life. Receive it now. Let there be a coming alive of every ministry and every dead knowledge that has filled your heads and your hearts. Let there be a coming alive. Let there be an impartation of the Holy Ghost. Let there be a coming alive. Let it begin to grow. Let it begin to flourish. Let it begin to increase. Receive the Holy Ghost. Let your life come alive. Let your life come alive. In the name of Jesus. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. The filler of our cups. The filler of our cups. The kiss of the bride of the Lord. Mashabalaba. 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 Kamalabalabalaba. Mandolabalaba. A filler. The filler of our cups. Let this cup be filled. Let this cup be filled. Let it be filled. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Thank you for filling this cup. Just receive it. It's all over you. A new desire, a new life has been birthed into you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes. Wave after wave. Wave after wave. Lift your hands and sing with me. Glory of the Lord. Thank you, Celia. Come this way. This holy place. I'm praying for the everlasting mercies of God to be given to you. And the everlasting grace of God to be upon your life in the name of Jesus. Receive the everlasting mercies and grace of God in your life. May God show mercy and may God show kindness and mercy into your life. Father, thank you in the name of Jesus for everlasting mercies and grace. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. 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 Oh, yes. The glory of the Lord fills His holy place. Wave after wave, wave after wave. Glory of the Lord fills His holy place. Lift your hand and join me to say thank you to the Lord tonight. Thank him that he's blessed you with the Holy Ghost. I want everybody here to ask the Lord for him to breathe his life into something in your life. Maybe it is your marriage. Maybe it is your life. Maybe it is your school. Maybe it is your ministry. Maybe it is your church. Maybe it is your calling. Maybe it is something, I don't know, in your physical body. Right now, I feel God is answering that particular prayer. Lord, breathe life. Maybe it's a, rela- it's a relationship which is dead. Lord, breathe life. Breathe your life now. Your life, breathe your life now into this thing. I receive it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for your blessing, your great power, and your great supernatural touch. We adore you and we thank you tonight. 
in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Good afternoon. You may be seated. You know something? I'm very, very convinced of this. It's not your makeup. It's not how you speak. It's the spirit. Yeah. It's not that you speak coolly or, or softly or shouting. It's the spirit. That is what is not there. And that spirit is coming into your life to make a lot of difference into your life and your ministry. Amen. Amen. I believe it. How many believe it? Oh, yes. May the Spirit of God make a difference in your life. And they receive power after the Holy Ghost came. Don't go for your shepherd's meeting without praying. Don't go for your fellowship meeting without calling on God and getting to the place where you now you know I am filled with the Spirit as I'm going. Amen. Amen. So that your words will be full of anointing and full of the power of the Holy Ghost. Lift your hands. Father, thank you for your great blessing and your great gift. We receive it and enjoy it and walk in it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.